Greetings from Living Spark. Welcome to a video for enriching your life. Subscribe, like and ring the bell to be notified. In today's video, I have tried to give you the nature and purpose of a myth. Myth is a medium to capture the brilliance of truth for common understanding. Joseph Campbell's quote in his book captures the essence of what is myth. And he says, it is a symbol, an approximate expression of truth, an insight into a more profound than scientific description and a logical analysis that can ever achieve at the time of the creation of the myth. The procedure is quite legitimate provided we understand what is being done. This is the essence of the quote. Now, what has happened over the past 2000 to 5000 years during which the myths were written is that we have not understood its purpose and completely assigned a factual and historical dimension and a literal validity to the mythological stories. This is true of all religious texts, most of which are written as a quasi-myth or quasi-historical narratives, wherein we find that certain historical elements were used with added spiritual meaning so that it could be used by common people. But in the rational age, these two factors of dominance of literal interpretation so that it can appeal to reason and the historical validity by calling upon the writer of this text as historical witnesses have become a tool to install a belief system. Now, I would like to just take upon only one mythological narrative to give you a snapshot of what has happened. Let us take the creation story in the Bible in Genesis. The symbols employed such as sacred garden, the flow of water from the underworld, the serpent, the opening of one's eyes, cherubim with the flaming sword, are all common symbols that appear throughout the ancient Near East in biblical times. The very origin of all these things could be traced back to the mythological stories or mythological narratives in the Sumerian civilization. In these narratives, there is a strong invocation to the psychology of the listener through universal archetypes as elements in the story or in the myth. Let us take the serpent in the garden. Those of us who have done consciousness studies know that a coiled serpent or Ouroboros was a symbol of unity consciousness, that is to say that there was no separation from human consciousness from nature. But the snake on the tree of knowledge represents the evolutionary level of consciousness wherein human beings moved from an integral approach to consciousness with nature and the universe to a egoistic mode and said, I am. This was his downfall, which led to his expulsion from the Garden of Eden. Sumerian mythology also talks about Marduk and Tiamat, the man and the dragon. Vedic lore talks about Indira and Electra, the dragon and the serpent. Greek mythologists talk about Zeus and Typhoon. All these myths are told to invoke and make humanity keenly aware of our pure primal consciousness in whatever scriptures that we read. We see that these symbols are used to enrich the understanding of these narratives. So my request through this particular video is that we read not just a literal interpretation, but the deeper meaning of all that is told in the scriptures so that our spiritual life can be empowered. And thank you for watching and listening.